couple of minutes for an on-time departure. Uh, flight time this afternoon will be two hours, 40 minutes. That was going to be about 10 minutes early into Las Vegas. Good afternoon from Louis Armstrong International Airport in New Orleans. Today I'm heading to Vegas with a stopover in Houston. And I'm flying on United 1699 and 2086. Join me on this trip report and flight experience. Though I could have used the Premier Line as a Star Alliance Gold with Asiana, I decided to check in at the kiosk. After getting my boarding pass and baggage tag, one of the agents walked up to me and put the tag on for me while confirming the details for my flights. After dropping the bag off, I headed off to TSA pre-check. And there is my flight, United 1699 to Houston, on time and departing from Charlie 9. I didn't realize it would be such a busy Wednesday afternoon. Those lines at TSA, clear, and TSA pre-check all look really long. With that long line, I'll see how long it takes to clear TSA pre-check. I entered the line at 1.19 p.m and it took 14 minutes once I cleared and left TSA at around 1.33. I love how this new airport has nice clear windows. This new terminal opened in November 2019 and it's a beautiful terminal. There you can see Concourse C where my flight on United will depart from and on the other side you can see Concourse B where Southwest has all of its flights departing from. Just after TSA and before you reach the food court and shops there's a hallway leading to the restrooms and it leads to this small and quiet chapel. So if you need some peace and quiet or prayer, FSY has you covered. I don't know, maybe you need to say a prayer to enter the Delta Sky Club. Here in New Orleans, there's a sign out front telling passengers the lounge is at capacity. Here's a little plane spotting in New Orleans for you, thanks to the nice big windows. Unlike the Sky Club with the sign saying it's full, the United Club has some room. As a Star Alliance Gold with Asiana, I'm able to access United Club even flying on a domestic flight. Instead, if I had used my United Mileage number, I would not have had access to the club and would have had to use the one-time pass instead. The bar is behind those tables and the food buffet is on the right and you can see the power outlets. This afternoon the food looked pretty good and was quite filling. I had a slider, a salad, and the highlight was the crawfish etouffee. To drink I had a cup of water and a machine made macchiato. I liked the food so much, the etouffee especially, that I decided to get a second bowl and have it served with a glass of chardonnay. Wine and beer are free. And there's the espresso machine and it's making me a latte. Though I wish they had an actual barista, I guess this will do. The only problem I have with this United Club is that there's no natural light as you have to take an elevator down to get to the club. But other than that, it was clean, the attendants were very friendly and they picked up our plates and cups very quickly. And the food was pretty filling. Nicely done United Club at MSY. I feel pretty good and relaxed. Let's head to gate C9 to board our flight to Houston. Here's my plane. It's a 22 year old Airbus A320-200. Registered November 473 Uniform Alpha. It was delivered to United on May 15, 2001, and also flew with Ted. It arrived earlier from Chicago O'Hare. I'll ask for a slight delay, and I'm slowly getting out of Chicago. I'm going to do our best to make up as much time as we can or more. We won't be up for 57 minutes taking off the touchdown. I'm not actually going to show you the experience on 1699 as the flight's less than an hour, and I ended up in an aisle seat. But overall, I found the flight to be relatively calm until it was time to deplane in Houston as the flight was late and some passengers had really short connections. And some of those worried passengers were trying to get off the plane as quickly as possible so that they wouldn't miss their flight, and they tried to make it known so that they could get out first. That caused a bit of tension. Just like my previous flight that was late, I had another tight connection in Houston. I had about 45 minutes to catch my flight. Thankfully, 
the gate was only five away, and I also had time to pass by the United Club. I didn't have a lot of time to hang out in the United Club, but I did stay long enough to make a small plate of birria nachos. I was in that lounge probably for no more than 10 minutes before I had to go and get to the next gate. Alright, I'm off to gate C36. Houston Bush is a large airport, and even with the gate numbers close by, I still had a 10 minute walk. Once again, boarding is about 5 minutes away, and group 1 and 2 are already all lined up. And even though I'm in group 1, seeing this line makes me appreciate the Southwest boarding process. This evening, I'm flying on this 22-year-old Boeing 737-900ER. It's registered November 37408. It was delivered to Continental Airlines with the same registration April 10, 2001, and had arrived from Vegas as UA 1714. Even with the hectic looking gate area and being one of the last in group one to board, it is nice to get on board very early. As the Star Alliance Gold of Asiana, this is one of the perks, along with being able to access United Club on a domestic flight. I'll explain one of the other perks I took advantage of toward the end of the video. Today I'll be seated in 25C, an aisle seat. Usually I try to get window seats, as you've seen on almost all my domestic trip reports, but I wasn't able to get a window seat this time. This United 737-900ER is configured with 159 economy seats in a 3-3 configuration across 27 rows. The seats have between 30 and 31 inches of pitch, and the seat reclines 2 inches. Be careful if you're sitting in row 24 as there's a box there and it looks like it's for the entertainment system and it's taking up the whole overhead bin. The rest of the bins are pretty standard and should fit all of your carry-ons. The legroom seems okay. At least my knees aren't touching the back of the seat in front of me. And as you can see, my backpack fits under the seat. We do have seat back direct TV and personal device entertainment as well as Wi-Fi. There is also no USB under the monitor, and there are two power outlets shared by three seats. The power outlets are located below between you and your seatmate's legs. There are adjustable headrests at your seat, and we also have personal air vents and reading lights that you can control. Feels like we're going back to the year 2000 with the look of the reading light and air vent. Underneath the monitor is the pocket that has the safety card and Hemisphere's magazine copy, as well as the air sickness bag. The tray is small and doesn't have that little pocket where you can place your cup. And there's another little pouch down there where you can put some more stuff. I usually use that to hold my used cup and trash. Be careful with the armrest as the remote control to control the IFE is there, and if you put your arm there, you might end up changing the channel or brightness or something. As you are more off the air, the the plane is completely full, so we do ask that you uh, please only your large items. You can see the our final flight verification that you have on in the United. Flight number 2086, service to Las Vegas. Flight time, 2 hours and 40 minutes. Please double check the aisle way down by your feet. Make sure those items that you have stored under the seat in front of you are not obstructing your aisle way, please. For those of you seated in the main cabin today, if you think you are going to want to purchase off of the menu, we are using contactless payments. You'll have to have your credit card information stored into the wallet section of the United mobile app. You can download that app onto your device. One of the things I'm noticing about this particular flight is the amount of advertisements playing on the IFB just as we're getting ready to push back. So when sitting at an aisle seat, you do lose out on the window, obviously, and the view. And the crew has already turned the lights off in the cabin. But it's okay as this flight will be mostly flown after sunset and will arrive into Vegas at night so there's really not much to see. We're pushing back about 20 minutes behind schedule at 6.58 p.m. local. However, we should land in Las Vegas about 15 minutes ahead of schedule, which is a good thing. So the flight will be about two hours and 40 minutes, a similar time as a flight between LA and Seattle.
we do ask that while you're seated, please keep your seatbelt fastened just in case there's any unexpected turbulence. Uh, we're showing touchdown at about 7.40 local time. That would be about 10 minutes ahead of schedule this evening. We'll have more information for you down the road. For now, sit back, relax, enjoy the flight. For snacks on this flight, we have a choice of a Biscoff cookie or what I got, the fruit bar. I also had a cup of water. So if you want something more substantial, you could buy a snack box. I wasn't terribly hungry, so the fruit bar was good enough for me. Okay, let's take a quick look at the restroom before we land in Vegas. There's a small sink and basin. Just be careful since it looks like the water could splash on you. The mirror makes the restroom look bigger than it actually is. There's a bassinet if you need to change a diaper. There's the coat hook. And with that out of the way, Let's now head back to our seat and prepare for landing and for me to share my thoughts on these flights from New Orleans to Las Vegas. We're coming through the aisle to collect all remaining service items at this time. If you would please pass those to the center aisle for collection. I'd originally been checked into a flight that would have routed me through Denver and gotten me into Vegas around 10 p.m. That morning, I went to check in again and checked if I could actually get a confirmed seat on an earlier flight. This option opened up and I took it. However, since it was 8 hours before the flight, I had to settle for whatever seat I could get. An aisle seat in the preferred section was available. Again, if you have Starline's gold status, this option is available if you have flexibility and need to get on a different flight. Just be aware how close you are to boarding time and see if the connections are too close for your comfort or not. However, it was a little stressful changing flights a few hours before, but I knew the flight I wanted since this isn't common for me to do, and the schedule and connections worked out for me just fine. They leave the seatbelt sign off for the remainder of the flight, so please check your seatbelt fasten for uh, arrival and landing. Good news, we're uh, still 10 minutes ahead of schedule, touching down at 7.40 local time. Give us a couple minutes after touchdown to get over to our gate. We're playing for D-53, that's Delta-53 this evening. It's been our pleasure to fly you tonight. We hope to see you again on a future United flight. We're landing in Las Vegas soon to prepare the cabin. For landing, we do need to collect all remaining service items. Overall, there was nothing fancy or special about either of these two flights. The boarding seems kind of hectic, even though I'm in Group 1. I guess I just have to get there plenty early if I don't want to wait in line. I'm glad I have status to access these features that I shared with you today, and know that if I have a chance to confirm a seat on a different flight, I can do it. With all that, I want to say welcome to Las Vegas. However, there's no view of this trip from my seat. Vegas local time is 7.40 p.m. Please remain comfortably seated while we taxi the aircraft over to the gate. Once the captain turns off the fastened seatbelt sign, this will be your indication to check around your seating area in the seat back pocket set up with the overhead bins for all of your personal belongings. And again, use some caution when opening up the overhead bins as your items do tend to shift around during the flight and landing. You may now use your smaller electronic devices. If you are seated in the emergency exit row, please Refrain from plugging your electronics into the outlets. Once you enter the terminal, you'll be greeted by ground personnel. They will be able to answer any questions you have regarding your travel. United to Star Alliance partners and your entire in-flight crew. We do thank you for choosing to fly with us today. We hope you've had a pleasant experience and we do look forward to seeing you again on another United flight. Thanks for joining me on both United 1699 and 2086. See you next time.